Hello everybody and welcome back to Arcade Spirit. This one's, this one's a bit long so I'm gonna get into it real fast but when we last left off we had just finished our date with Percy who had left us with some interesting words about maybe not being ambitious enough so a little odd but we'll see a culmination of of the actions we take because of that in this one so I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in a moment. Time for the afternoon shift. That's when things usually heat up. After the quiet mornings, more kids coming in after school, more pro, game, pro gamers rolling in with the crews. I'm headed back to my desk, ready to take care of what needs taken care of when I'm intercepted en route. En route. Uh, crap. Okay, Gavin's is hard. Harry, Ashley, you're both back. Good. I was hoping to catch you before we left. Ooh, what's up? Hamza's up. He okay. is, huh? Okay. Ashley. I'll bring the van around shortly. Eri, you'll be flying solo today. Hang on, what's happening exactly? Who's Hamza? Hamza's a game finder and an auctioneer and gives next to no notice of when a new block of games will be going under the gavel, so we need to move. Ashley, Naomi, Francie, and I will be going to this auction for the rest of the afternoon while you run the Funplex. My first instinct is, a lot, is to nod and go along with it. Gavin's the law around these parts. But, Percy's words are still dangling away in my mind. Doing what he's doing is great and all, but maybe I need to step up a bit more. Plus, the idea of being trapped in here during our heaviest hours with no support was hardly appealing. Um... Uh... I don't want to, like, force Ashley. Uh... I kind of want to go, but I don't want to be, like, super aggressive. He was right at risk of spoilers. The reason Percy searched because he desperately was trying to raise money for his sister's treatment. So we are in America. Okay, that makes sense. We are. De I mean, like, I'm pretty. I, I'm pretty sure it's like implied. But like, yeah, I assumed. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually, Flower. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think I did kind of figure that at one point, but. It was more of a, now, now, now he's got all this money and doesn't really know what to do with it anymore, you know? Or, I don't know. That's kind of what it seems like. I don't think he's in a, he's just, he's just in, I guess, no, he said he comes from a small village. I don't know. Healthcare everywhere sucks, I guess. <gasps> His mother's Australian! I knew it! I knew it! I knew there was Australian somewhere! <laughs> The only special to get to treat his sister was in America. Okay, okay. So they so they had to go to America for the specialist treatment and then they had to deal with all of our healthcare issues. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna do this one because I wanna come, but I, I hope they don't get mad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What if I wanna come along and see this auction myself? Come on, I'm never gonna learn the business if I don't take a bigger role. Um... Oh, Gavin, come on. You're a floor attendant. Your place is on the floor. Well, that's patently unfair. I'm a floor attendant too, and you're dragging me along. I feel like, feel like such a third wheel at these auctions anyway. Let Ari be the third wheel and let me handle the floor. Okay, so she doesn't mind. Okay, good. I'll be the finest third wheel you've ever met. Trust me. Trust me. I just want to do more than what I've been doing. Different things, new things, show some initiative. Like, I suppose it wouldn't change too much to bring Ari instead, but no costume today, Ashley. I need non-plush fingers on duty in case of chick ticket jams. Pinky can stay in storage for the afternoon. I'm just happy to be helping folk out one way or the other. I need to go get the van. Wait out front, please. Spending time with the boys today, I guess. We'll probably be closed by the time you get back. Oh, wait. We'll probably be closed by the time you get back. So, I'll see you in the morning. Well, Lieutenant Ashley, away! Naomi! It's Naomi! <laughs> Leaving me outside with my two traveling companions. No time to chat, however, as Gavin pulls his van and a rental trailer around. No, look, see, we're put, we're hanging out, we're hanging out with with Naomi today. Oh, Roma, does this allow gay relationships? This allows every relationship under the sun. You can you can be whatever your heart desires. They even have an asexual route, which I personally appreciate. So, but I'm doing the romance route because it's fun. But they have an asexual route as well. You can do whatever you want. You just did you didn't you see the gay couple that we just saw at the bookstore? Like they would tease that and not let us have that. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, inclusivity was one of the design pillars, and that was it's been advertised like straight up like everywhere. It's like 
They, I mean, at the beginning, you can choose your pronouns, she, he, they, like, I mean, you can be, you can be, choose the asexual route, you can choose if you want to just flirt, you can choose if you want to have flirting and romance, like, it's, it runs the gamut, you can do everything. Oh my, how exciting, I rarely go on adventures these days. It's just, a, oh, hang on, her voice saying it, um, it's just a tri quick trip, ma'am. Any trip is an adventure when you make it one, shall we? Oh yeah, no, and no, thought flower. I've actually, you know, I've read things before about games where it's like, it takes more effort to code out things than it does to like, just include them from the get go. You know, like, like saying that this romance is unavailable for this type of person. And it's like, that takes a lot of work to like code that out. Or you could just say, here, everybody go. Like takes way less work to just like put it in there and let it go. Oh, Angel Arts would love this Roma. I'll probably, maybe I'll tweet at him too. You as well. We'll all tweet at him and then he'll notice us. Gavin, consulting a driving map on his phone, leads us out of the city via a series of weird turns and back roads. Also, I'm pretty sure like, um, the main character doesn't really, the only thing you can really change is like the hair and eye color and like this color. So basically you're pretty androgynous. So, oh, you, you, you choose like he, she, they, but it doesn't change like the body shape or anything. I think that's part of the reason we wear a hoodie is like just to make it so it's just very androgynous looking so you can be whatever you want to be. Right? Dragon Age 2 route. Everyone's bisexual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, this will save time in the long run. Where's Hamza set up this time? On side on some abandoned estate just outside town. It's about to be torn down, but they found a trove of arcade games in the basement. So exciting! I love arcade raids! Arcade auctions. Raids. Yeah, these two in the same vehicle, maybe not the best. Alright. You have limited options because of what you're seeing here. You wanted to put your character on screen a lot and budget is a thing, so I'm androgynous. No, I definitely... Okay, though, Flower. It was so funny because I hadn't seen my character in forever, right? Except for, like, the main screen. And then we had that scene where the cupcakes get thrown. Oh, my gosh. Seeing your character, like, fly out, it was, like, so funny. We, I was dying with laughter. Like, we looked so intense. We're like, get down, Naomi! And, like, you just, like... It was just... It just like spread across the screen. It was so funny. The humor in this game is so well done. You guys have done a great job. Hamza's a Moroccan name? Nice. I, I, it sounds like Hanzo to me, but that's because I'm an Overwatch pleb, so. <laughs> Auctions. Uh, you guys got an arcade to English dictionary I could borrow? Francine, without looking up from her knitting, answers. A raid is when a bunch of collectors get together and rescue games before they can be junked by their original owner. An auction is when someone sells off their arcade games one at a time to a crowd of active bidders. So it's the same thing. So which is this, a raid or an auction? It's both, dearie. Hands of that sweet boy. Buys up private- I'm trying to like, give her a British accent. Buys up private collections of where they can be thrown away. He rescues them from that terrible fate, then auctions off his fines. Sort of. Okay, now I'm fuzzy on the sort of part. I'm the newbie here, remember? Well, okay, so Hamza obviously auctions off games for cash money, but he's a very whimsical kind of guy. Once I saw him trade off a vintage burglar time in exchange for someone's super secret chili recipe passed down through generations of family. In Ooh. other words, he's just on the edge of being a loon. This would be a lot simpler if it was just a raid. We pay up front, we declare what games we want, and cart them away. Instead, he ambushes us with these impromptu auctions and makes us come down there to entertain his whims. Wonderful. I think it's sweet. He wants to make sure the games go to good homes, to people who really want them, even if they can't pay. And really, we should be honored we get an invitation. He's trying to cut out the big franchise arcades like Deco's Palace and help out the little guys, like us. Um. It's inefficient and relies entirely on keeping, ha keeping on Hamza's good side. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, no, helping out the little guy sounds good. I'm guessing Ham's is the sort of person who would let a kid have the game of his dreams for free. He doesn't care about money, he cares about people, am I right? Correct, Amundo! Ham's is a great guy! Is he so hard? Is he hard to predict? Sure! But he's got a big heart, and that means something in this business. Not enough big hearts left some days. 
Yes, because that's how you pay the bills and keep the doors open, by having a big heart. Oh, Gavin, come now. Come now, Gavin. I won't deny we can sometimes speak out a trade that's practically a steal, thanks to his personal modus operandi. But let's not push too far here. We need to temper out our expectations a little bit, I suspect. I think we don't not. have room to add many more games, especially relics like Hamza usually deals in. Hmm. What about the offsite storage unit? We can just rotate games in and out more often. Nearly full to bursting, and not cheap for us to rent on a monthly basis. I'm not saying we have to go home empty-handed. Certainly a few holes in our roster we can fill should we find an excellent deal and beat the other bidders. But consider this, above anything else, a way to maintain relations with Hamza, even if we don't end up bidding. Aww! Now, now, Naomi. Gavin knows the numbers. I'm in favor of making our little fun plaques more and more fun, but floor space is... It is. It is indeed. You think he, you still think he's a secret kink machine? <laughs> you know, with a tie like that and a, and a ripped with, with that rip in his pants that's really really subtle. Yeah. There's 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 some fun to this guy. And Gavin, remember, if we find some darling little game Naomi would lavish adoration upon, we can always retire an older game. Life, my young friends, is a series of trade-offs. Well, isn't it better to, you know, not just settle and compromise all the time? Hmm. Well, now, there are trade-offs, and there are... I mean, yeah, I think this is good, right? Because, like, so far our character progression has been, we can't settle, we can't compromise. We gotta, like, we gotta, like, push it, and we gotta, like, you know, we gotta, like, leap for something better. But now, maybe Francine is gonna kind of be, th this next little part's gonna be like, hey, you know, there are times where, like, you have to make trade-offs and you have to make compromises that don't necessarily have to compromise like your morals or your dreams or anything but you gotta like you gotta be willing to like trade some things for other things you know you can't have it all, all the time it's silly to say that you should Here never we go. compromise as silly as it is to say you should always compromise it's what you compromise that defines who you are. I like are. it, I like it. You're all so young yet. You've time to make mistakes in learning what trade you You say to that, make. but then I'm like almost 30 and I feel like I've got no life left and no chances. <sighs> you know what I mean? It's like, uh, I'm not old, but like, I feel like I'm like past the time I could get my masters, past the time I could do anything fun or cool, but then I have to remember that that's not the case. And some people didn't do cool things till they were like 40 or 50. So it's good to remember, but still, it's hard. Making this, ge this game was a dream of yours since childhood. You're 43 now? Oh my gosh, see that's the thing, is like there are people. There are people like who do that. Thank you. <laughs> Cause I would love to make a video game. Like I've been trying to learn programming. I've joined the like pixels group, that like the, the writing group that's like online. And I'm trying to like up the ante on my writing skills and stuff. And I did English and anthropology. And like, I don't know, like the market seems like really flooded and stuff. And everyone's making an indie game. And I'm like, is it even worth it? I don't know, but it would be so cool. I don't know, or at least work in video games, but I'm like, ah, I feel like I'm too old, but there's, there's stuff. There's stuff you can do. <laughs> like, I don't know, there is. That penguin in there, baby, I love that sign. We saw that immediately and we were like, it's so cute. No, thank you, thank you, Flower, for reals. Like, I got, I just gotta remember that like, you're never too old to start something new, so this is, that was a good pep talk. <laughs> Thank you. From the creator of this game I'm playing. One of the creators of this game I'm playing. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's really that's really good to hear. Yeah, unless and then we so then we have this, right? So it's like you have all the time in the world to make the decisions, unless you don't make rent on your apartment or your son is growling. So there's like there's difficulties, yeah. So but you feel the same way and you're like, yeah, I know, right? I mean I felt that way legitimately when I was like twenty two, so yeah. Uh, there are no two creative creations that are true like will always be yours by virtue of having made it so like yeah even though the market's like I mean if nothing else even if nobody like m like bought it or only a few people bought it or something like it would still be something that I had made and put out into the world and that's what I want to do 
I just want to like leave my mark on the world in some way, even if it's like a small way. That's kind of why I started doing YouTube and Twitch and stuff. Is like these videos will be here for a long time, and it may be small, but it's kind of my mark on the world. So, yeah. Iris and Juniper have pushed me to stop settling for less out of life, to stand up for myself and my happiness, and I've done just that without regret. So, everything should be fine now, right? Haha! -ha. <laughs> right? <laughs> New default topic diversion. The weather. Who cares if everyone's making an indie game? Imagine a bouquet if every flower uh, thought everyone else is already blooming, so I just won't. Oh, man! You'd send a thin heart, but alas, you're not... I have, we have, we have created a neat little circle here. Like I started just like doing this and then like, I've met people that have been hanging out with me for years now because of this. So it's been, I have no regrets doing this. This was, this was really cool and I want to do it for as long as possible. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been good. Well, at least it's a nice day for an outing, right? Oh my gosh, no, oh, come on. Wonderful. Glad I packed plastic bags to wrap catnips in, just in case. Oh, wow. Nice. Good for you, Gavin. That's our Gavin. Always thinking ahead. Trying to protect your investments, huh? From Hans' invitation, it seems this arcade was largely abandoned and left to rot. I'd rather not add water damage to the ailments the games are already suffering. It's so sad when we come across a wonderful game that's just beyond repair. That's just room beyond repair. Most our collectors show their collections a lot of love, but others just don't care. You find old games of barns, exposed to the elements, and falling apart. I suppose this is the one thing we can easily agree on. It's important to take care of your games. For their resale value, you mean? A broken game is no fun to play with, and it's a shame to see a classic in terrible condition. Consider pinball. Pinball games are very prone to breakdowns, particularly older ones. To experience them in their glory, you need to show them care. Even beyond a busted game, even even beyond a busted game earning no quarters, it feels like a waste to allow an enjoyable game to lie fallow. A waste of true potential. Huh, good point. Glad to see these two getting along better, even if Naomi keeps preemptively attacking him along the way there. With the rain pounding down on the van roof, the conversation gets a bit difficult. Gradually, everybody resumes fiddling about with their phones, knitting, or driving. Leaving me to wonder exactly where is this auction and or raid happening anyway. We've been driving for some time, leaving the city far behind. What would a massive trove of arcade games be doing this far out with sticks? Maybe it's some closed down roller rink or an old bowling alley, or... A haunted mansion! Yay! <laughs> or maybe it's a creepy old house that's likely haunted by exactly 87,194 ghosts. Exactly! <laughs> oh my gosh, do you hear the music? You might not be able to hear it because turn the music down pretty low, but it's that one that I can't remember, but they always play during scary. Hang on, let me see if I can turn it up a little bit more. Ah, oh, the classic cater luck and play. That's our last name. So majestically awful. Gavin pulls up alongside any number of other vans and trucks. We're here a little late, it seems. Good grief, is this really the auction site? Creepy, definitely creepy. At least an eight on the creepometer. <laughs> I love the music. <laughs> yeah, Night on Bald Mountain, that's what it is. I always picture that Fantasia scene with the devil coming out and like destroying the town. That's the only context I have for it. An old home has character, I feel. Let's not judge it by the exterior, shall we? With all speed, the group hurries inside to get away from the weather. Ooh, spooky! There's a creepy picture! A large group was already gathered in the foyer of the crumpling estate, but one rushes forward to greet us in a blur as the others pay little mind. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what an enthusiastic man! Hamza, greetings our friends from the Funplex. He's Welcome beautiful! He's gorgeous! Oh my gosh! You've rushed Fantasia enough to know the scary part with this song? Yeah, yeah. With the giant demon in the mountain and the naked lady demons? I don't remember naked lady demons, but I was very young. But I watched it a lot when I was young. Gavin, stalwart <laughs> as ever. Naomi, love what you've done with your hair. Miss Francine, a beauty surpassed oh, what only a charmer. by your wisdom. Nice, nice. This is my, this is my Saudi prince. Yeah, now he's. I've claimed him. 
Uh, now he's got a fantastic outfit and fantastic hair. Oh, fresh. <laughs> and a new I'm player, a new player. It seems. Who might you? Eric Cater. Oh, I didn't mean to click I see. fast. Greetings to you and yours. I am known Hamza. as Hamza, seeker of antiquity, finder of things lost, player nice. of games. And welcome to, well, not my home, but a place where Hamza shall provide hospitality. In a spooky regardless. house, I love it. Uh, and, mm, let's just do this one. Thank you for your invitation, Mr. Hamza. I understand you want me to select, invite a select few. The Funplex is proud to accept your summoning. That sounds a bit bootlickery, but it, the other ones were like making fun of him, and I didn't really want to because I like his style. Right? I was gonna say, I don't want to make fun of the name Seeker of Antiquity because it's a freaking dope name. It's a dope name. He sounds like a Khajiit! That's because the Khajiit sound kind of Arabian, and that's kind of what I think he's supposed to sound like. Moroccan? You should ask your friend. Yeah, yeah, quick, have your, take a picture or something and ask your friend. <laughs> or ask your fiance. Your friend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See, you gotta, you gotta, if, if we're playing, like, like, from what I've read, like, in, like, Arabian, like, culture and stuff, like, the, the meet and greet was very, like, a rich, like, a ritual that was, like, very, like, hospitality infused, and so, like, there was, like, certain, like, la there was a certain language that you used when, like, greeting and exchanging greetings in, like, when you were, like, the one hosting or the one being hosted and stuff, so, yeah, it's kind of funny. Like, you gotta respond the right way. Indeed, I am very careful who I allow to my events. These machines deserve owners who will respect and appreciate them. Hamza will accept nothing less. Alas, I've not a moment to enjoy your fine company. Ari Kader, perhaps later, but for now, it is time. <gasps> Hamza rallies the small crowd in the room, beginning the proceedings. Friends, companions, long-time allies of the noble art of the arcade, welcome, welcome to Donna Wood. The story begins nearly 30 years ago when legendary pop musician Donna Michaels, singer of such hit as Thrilling and Mama Don't Mope, did a stately, did a stately pleasure dome decree. Here, the reclusive idol crafted a private amusement park, a petting zoo, and an arcade. You'll, she's asleep, but you'll show her later and let us know for sure. Hamza has wares if you have coin. That's exactly what it is. Except Hamza also makes a point of like not necessarily giving people who have coin or like he takes like the chili recipe or whatever i liked the twins and i agree lemon z i liked the twin oh no you never liked the twins i did like the twins better than anybody else i think and the tall quiet guy i can't remember his name alas she could only enjoy this paradise for a short 10 years before her tragic death Needless to say, the estate has fallen on hard times ever since. In this year, it shall be torn down to make way for condominiums. But not before we have our say. Friends, those games that Donna Michaels cherished still lurk <gasps> one floor below, ready to be rescued from such a terrible fate. It is our moral imperative to do so. He's the moral, he's the human equivalent of a golden retriever and you can't hit a gold. I never really liked Tamaki. He, like the main guy who's always super peppy. I don't know. I always like, I like anybody else better than Tamaki. But yeah, he's basically a golden retriever. You can't hate him. You just, I don't know. I have paid the estate owners a princely sum for the entire lot. Now, Hamza, Hamza. parcels them out to you. By all means, browse the collection. See which pieces sing out to you. On the far table, you shall food, find refreshments, grapes, sparkling wine, and delicacies from my travels. Mingle, cavort, and we shall begin the auction in one I don't know how time. this could not be fun. Like, maybe if you're super hyper-organized, but like, this would be super fun. This dude's hair and eyeliner is on point, it is. Indeed, a lavishly arranged table that probably costs more than any single arcade game to put together. Any single arcade game to put together is attended upon by the invitees soon after. I feel like I'm attending some ancient Roman celebration of debauchery and gluttony, and it's not an arcade raid, or an arcade auction, or whatever. 
Donna Michaels, I knew it. I should have recognized Donna when we pulled in, but it was raining too hard. Who? You've never heard of Donna Michaels? She was the hottest musical act of 1980. Naomi, I was born in 1990. I'm totally plugging in my phone into the van stereo so we can blast girls just want to play games all the way home. But first, I'm gonna go check out the cabinets in her arcade. I'm not really into mingling. Later! She dances off with all speed, heading for the stairs leading below. Hmm. Hmm, suppose I should go network a bit. Hamza's events always draw an interesting crowd of rival arcade owners. Heading for the foodstuffs, Gavin arranges himself a plate so he has an excuse to hang around and eavesdrop on the other collectors, leaving me to uh, do stuff. Third wheel, best third wheel in the game. Now I see why Ashley was bored at these events. Gavin schmoozes, Naomi analyzes finds, and Francine's already napping in a chair. I've got nothing to do. Well, when in doubt, find someone who knows what they're doing and stick to them like glue. Go browse the games with Naomi. I'm not really interested in the arcade version of Game of Thrones! <laughs> In the arcade version of Game of Thrones going on up here. Gavin can handle these guys. Me, I want to see this legendary arcade Hamza was talking about. So I head downstairs to join Naomi. It'd be cool to see this before everybody else got down there. Like, it'd be really spooky. Whoa. Is this a private collection or a full-fledged arcade? Ooh, I love the lightning going on outside. I was expecting a handful of games and a pool table or something, but this, this is easily three times larger than the Funplex itself, even coated in dust and disrespair. <gasps> Can we buy this place? <gasps> Can we buy it? Can we buy the whole place and then like move? I guess that's really, it's out in the sticks, isn't it? So it's like we have so much room and like people can come and play all the games, but we're kind of far out. And the, the thing about an arcade is it's kind of got to be close to people. And it's also hard to find anyone in this maze of tightly packed games. Invitees are browsing the- Oh, we're all, everybody's down here already. Boo. Invitees are browsing the available stock to decide what's worth bidding on, making it crowded as well. But eventually, I know Kate and Naomi practically cuddling a narrow-looking TMNT machine? Like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles machine? Oh, Ari, look! A two-player variant of te Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! It is, it's got the little copyright thing. These were only released in the Oceania region! Such a rare find! Um, I don't have her voice right, I can't- I haven't- I haven't heard her say anything. Wait, wasn't that game originally four-player? What? Anybody want a version with only two joysticks? Well, be- oh, well, because- because- I mean, it's rare! It's a find! And it's less fun. Not the point! Anyway, it's hard to find one of these two-player or four-player games. Aw, uh, I'd love to have it for the arcade. I'd love to have that, and this one, and this one, and... Oh, if only I could take all these home with me. I mean, some have water damage, others like me have busted CRQs and strolls, and they all need work, but... I recall the game she was working on when I first met her. Extensive repairs needed just to make it playable. So, not only would you have to bid and win the game, but you'd have hours of work and plenty of spare parts to purchase ahead of you? I know! Isn't it great?! Um, okay, is there a nice way to say this? Um, how many restorations are in your backlog is a good question. But maybe we'll try to go with heart, because I feel like, I don't know, it's like, I know you love it, but... Anyway, we're going to try to do the heart option. You really love bringing back broken old games in working order, huh? Absolutely, yeah. these games deserve to shine as they once did ages ago. If I can turn back the clock and let them be what they truly can be, let people play them as they were in their prime, well, there's no greater feeling. And you enjoy the challenge of restoration too, repairing hardware, replacing damaged art, and the problem solving of broken monitors. Okay, I, there, there's supposed to be a butt in here somewhere though. You know me so well, Ari, exactly. And, okay, here we go. And all of that is admirable. I really love how happy these projects make you, Naomi. But, there's a flip side. How much time does it take to re restore a game? Hmm. I'd say, if it's in good shape, maybe a few hours? If it's really a wreck and needs extra love, a few days. Maybe weeks if parts are on back order? Okay, now think of the games we currently have and how many still need work or break down frequently. Can you take on a bunch of new projects? Well, uh, I hate to be a downer, but I have to, you have to be a little bit realistic in this situation. I could make the time work late, right? No, that's the millennial trap. The millennial trap is working overtime and then not getting paid for it and having your health suffer and then not being able to come in for work or when you do, you're sick and then you get fired because your company doesn't care. I mean, this company cares about you, obviously, but this is the step one to millennial trap of workaholic. 
Even a girl with bottomless energy has her limits. Naomi sighs, frustration building. It's not fair. <sighs> oh, she's it's gonna not talk. Fair. Okay. It's a trap! It's a trap, Naomi! Don't do it! <laughs> <laughs> Naomi's cute, you date her. She's she's a little crazy, but crazy in a good way. She's a she's really into like art, like the, the art of like arcade games and like she's into like the art and the technical aspect of it, so she's very, very passionate about it. Um but yeah, she can get that she can let that get away. She can just kinda run with it, you know. I know I mean I would never assume that. I know there's only so much we can realistically do. So many projects I can actually But you want to save them all, right? Like, I get it. I get it. Like, I do that with books sometimes that, like, use, like, stores that are going out of business. I, like, want to buy all the books and, like, take care of them. But you can't do that. But I, I wish I could do more. I wish we could do more. The Funplex has never really been a success. Even before I came on board, it was always struggling to stay afloat. I joined it because so few arcades still have the games I love. The loved. old ones? But I can't turn our situation around, can I? No, well, no. I try. We can still do our best. This is my first job. Part of me is hoping it'll be my last job, too. That I can happily spend all my days tinkering with these wonderful games. And there's that fear of, like, losing your, like, your dream job, right? Kind of what just happened at Blizzard recently, where people who have been there for, like, 10 or 15 years all of a sudden get sacked for no reason, for literally no reason. And it's like, and they're like, this was my dream job, and this is where I wanted to like retire, and now I'm not. Like things happen, and it's outside your control. The heart, the Blizzard thing is heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking, and it's horrendous. They had record sales this year, and they fire 800 people. I, my friend and I were talking about it for like half, for like hours yesterday. We were so frustrated. It's like, how how is that even legal? How is it even legal for this company to make that much money and then fire that many people? Like, you can't just say we're firing 800 people and then congrats us, we've made record, literally decade decade record breaking profits. Like, it, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. That was so cold hearted. It was really no. It was. He's like, top five hardest things I've had to do in my job. I'm like, yeah, up there with like, do I eat the, like, do I drink like the Chardonnay now or do I drink it in an hour? Like, you know, he's a, they gave, they, they also gave their like new CEO guy a $15 million bonus like months ago. And now they're saying they have to fire people. It's, it's unreal. And I, I, I kind of don't know why we're not all like rioting and picketing about this. Like. I don't know. I feel like somebody should just go and like put a guillotine in Activision Blizzard's front lawn and just leave it there. You know what I mean? Like, just like an artistic like sculpture guillotine out in the front lawn and be like, this is what, if this is the way you're gonna do it, like, this is what happens. Like, eventually, like, revolutions happen for less. Like, I don't know. Achieving a lock made Naomi cry. I did. She's not crying yet, though. Oh yeah, and they, they mostly probably fire like they but they fired like customer support people, like social media people, all that stuff that actually they're like non-development roles, even though if you're involved in any way with making a game, you're a developer. Like these were the people that like are interacted with the communities, you know, and among other things, and it's just it's really, really frustrating. Um Every kid says they want to be a fireman or an astronaut or a robot cop or something, but nobody actually ends right. up doing that. Except me. I wanted to fix up arcade games, and that's You wanted what to I'm be doing. a lemon? And here, Lemon Z, you're living the dream. You're living, you're truly living the dream. You've achieved your life goals. It's all I ever wanted to do. So. When I see all these old, broken games, I just want to show them the love I can give. I could be happy working on them for the rest of my life. She's gonna cry, and I'm gonna cry. Wow, that's dedication. And really, you went straight from school to an arcade job? I mean, I've meandered from job to job, never really sure what I wanted. That's normal, right? Yeah! Oh, good, because that's what I've been doing. Oh, definitely, I'm the oddball here. It's funny, I followed my heart and found just what I wanted, what I needed, and now, well... Now I'm scared someday it'll all come to an end. The Funplex will close. And if the Funplex goes under, I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. 
All I ever wanted was to work in an arcade. And I'm literally living my dream. Okay, now I feel bad for bringing down her day. <laughs> hey, look, you never know, right? Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll find a game down here that brings in thundering herds of players. Right! <laughs> it's a slim hope and we both know it, but Naomi clings to it immediately, eagerly. My low bank balance and grumbling stomach means I need to cling to that hope as well. I made my choice, now I need to make that choice work. Hmm. We just need to find the right game. Something nobody's played in a long time. Something that'll tug at the nostalgia strings. It's difficult finding the right balance, especially in the year 2000 something. A lot of these games are on life support, borrowed time. But they can be repaired, right? Well, yeah, for now. But CRTs, the monitors that power these old games, before LCDs and now 3D flats started replacing them, they're in short supply. Nobody makes them anymore. I mean, who buys a tube-based TV anymore? Nobody. It's all high definition, that dumb 3D projection tech, which looks awful. Nobody appreciates a good CRT anymore. Our high def display is way cheaper, though. I've seen some old games running them in other arcades. I was gonna say, she's gonna get mad. She's gonna get mad. Just need a battle royale game! Exactly! Oh my gosh, Lemon Z! You're right! Quick! <laughs> we, need to, we need to run through this arcade looking for the arcade version of a battle royale game. And that's where the money, that's where the money's at. They're wrong is what they are. These games weren't designed for pixel perfect flat panels. They're designed for fuzzy tubes. The picture looks weird on LCD. Even two weeks in, I'm still fuzzy myself on a lot of this stuff. But I grew up in the internet age. I'm a, I'm silicon literate. I got opinions. I got opinions. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the internet age. Oh, man. Let's use LCDs and just bash people over the head to make their vision blurry. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, but not gonna help. How about we buy some cheap and common games and then get them for spare? Ooh. Can't we simulate the fuzzy image and still use an LCD? Okay, these are really good options, actually. I don't know if she'd appreciate the simulation. I think she'd rather have the more, like, um, authentic. And that's kind of what arcades are about, I think. It's, like, authenticity. But we could also simulate authenticity at, for, through a cheaper method. She wants the smart solution, so second option. The, the, the third one would be cheaper, but I think this would probably be the... This could be the better option for a more authentic feel. So then we're... Because then we're different from the other arcades, right? The other arcades that are like, look at our LCDs. But if we're going for the nostalgia factor, if we just gut some cheap games and use their components, then then we'll have that more authentic feel. Just with that. So, what's the problem of having spare parts on hand, long term? Short of building our own factory for cranking out TV tubes, it's a temporary fix. Buy some cheap common games and use them as organ donors. Ugh. And we want a classic? Cheap and common, Naomi. Not some rare find, but one that's still readily available. We can even keep the cabinet itself, so it can be restored later if need be. Point is, mixing and matching the guts will keep more fragile games afloat. Well, I sense. mean, okay, yeah, that does make sense. And I bet I could sell Gavin on that idea, too. We'd need more rental storage, but it'd mean less ordering parts and less downtime. Oh, nice. We did it. Okay, I'll see if there's any, anything down here nobody would want and nobody would need. You know, Thank I'm glad you. you're with us at the Funplex. Whether you take my side or Gavin's side... Why? What? No! Mm, I wasn't saying anything about sides. I hate playing sides. It's just nice to have someone who cares about games around. Ashley's fun, but she's way more into cosplay than gaming. I love you. I love you. Uh, but it's kind of odd, you know? What? Feeling like I'm not alone. I'm gonna cry. I know that sounds dramatic, but I'm so used to toiling away in my little workshop with Ashley and Gavin not really caring about the things I love. They're kind enough to me and friendly. Well, Ashley is. But ever since you showed up, I feel like there's someone with me. It's odd. I'm not complaining, though. I guess it just takes getting used to, after years of feeling perfectly content to be alone. Away from strangers, crowds, I don't, I mean, it's not really my thing. I don't like to network like Gavin does, or socialize like Ashley does. Uh, <laughs> she's just like me! She's just like me! Naomi is me! And now I'm making things weird, so I'm gonna stop there. Besides, I'm just about done taking in my door down here. How about you and I? What? Uh-oh. Suddenly, shouting and stomping her feet from the floor above. What the? Sounds like there's a fight or something going on up there. I, I think we better go see what's what. If you'll come with me, I mean. Yeah. Quickly, we hurry upstairs. 
All right, I'm gonna call it there, but thank you all so much for joining me on this episode. I had to leave it at a cliffhanger. Hanger it ran a little bit long, but a lot happened, and we had some really good time with Naomi. I really like that, and the whole thing getting here. This place looks really, really cool. It's actually one of my favorite chapters, so I hope you're all enjoying, and I hope to see you in the next one.